What's going on everybody? This is Island Hopper TV and today we're going to compare USVI versus BVI. Let's do it. So the first thing you need to know is British Virgin Islands consist of around 60 islands, three of which are the main islands. You have Virgin Gorda, Tortola, and Jos van Dijk. Now, the U.S. Virgin Islands is also three main islands, St. Croix, St. Thomas, and St. John, and there's about 50 different islands in the U.S. Virgin Islands area, making for around 110 plus islands and keys around the Virgin Islands area. If you include the Spanish Virgin Islands, you also have a few islands over there off the coast of Puerto Rico, but we're going to talk about USVI and BVI right now. Now let's talk about the arrival process into USVI versus BVI. So if you're an American coming from uh, the United States and you arrive in USVI, you don't need to bring a passport, you just need your ID card and you're in. Now if you're coming from Britain and you want to go to USVI, then you need to bring your passport. And it's opposite now, if you're going from USVI to BVI, you will need to process immigration, customs, and bring a passport, even if you're going to one of the small uh, islands like Joe's Van Dyke, you have to go through customs in these places. And a lot of sailors, you know, they're known for kind of just going to an island and saying, oh, I didn't know that was BVI. I thought I was still in USVI or vice versa. But yes, you will need to process immigration when going to any one of the BVI from the U.S. or going from BVI to U.S. Even if you're an American citizen coming back to USVI, you will need a passport. So if you intend to go between the two territories, bring your passport. If you just want to come from US to USVI, all you need is your ID. But if you plan to go to BVI, bring your passport. Same goes for the British coming to the USVI. Now let's talk about weather. So both island chains or territories are very similar with the weather because they're so close. The hurricane belt actually runs right along the northern part of the British Virgin Islands because they're a little bit further north. Uh, that season actually lasts from about June 1st until November 30th. Uh, probably the strongest time for hurricanes is July, August, September. That's why it's considered low season. Peak season out here in these islands is gonna be around December and then January, kind of slows down in February and March, picks back up and then by April for spring break and Easter, it seems to be quite busy in both the islands, uh, but because USVI is attached to the United States, spring break, all of that, really busy during that time period. British Virgin Islands is still busy, but just not as much as USVI. Now let's talk about transportation. As you can see behind me, you have cruise ships. This here is Tortola. Also, Charlotte Amalie gets cruise ships, and cruises come in and out of other parts of these islands, dependent on how deep the channel is or if they can drop anchor. Now, when you're getting around, I found that British Virgin Islands and US Virgin Islands, you need a car. Taxis can be quite expensive on both islands. Uh, if you're gonna do a full island tour, that might cost you, uh, for a private car, around $70 for three hours. Now, I did find that the British Virgin Islands rents cars for a bit cheaper. If you go online and book ahead of time, you can obviously save money on both islands, but you really need a rental car. That's how you get the most value out of this island. They are, or these islands, there's so many of them, right? But the thing is, you have to get around uh, these roads. They go up hills, down hills. They're kind of tight, so keep that in mind. Also, they drive on the left side of the road on both islands, which is different than how they drive in the US. If you're coming from the UK, it's great for you, but uh, they'll have the American car with the uh, steering wheel on the left side, but you still drive on the left side, right? So something to keep in mind. Now, when it comes to getting around on ferries, as you can see right here, there is a ferry here. The difference between the British Virgin Islands and the USVI, you can take a ferry and drive your car onto the ferry in St. Thomas and go to St. John with your car, your rental car. You can't do that here if you go from Tortola to uh, Virgin Gorda or Jos Van Dyke. You have to actually get a new rental car in each island. So that can be convenient or inconvenient depending on how you look at it, right? But either way, they all have these ferries, fast ferries. They even have private boats that you can take as well. Now, if we compare prices between the BVI and the USVI, 
They say that the BVI is more expensive, but from my experience, I pay more for a rental car and accommodation on St. Thomas and St. John than I did in Virgin Gorda and Tortola. So even though they tell you that on paper, USVI is more affordable, from my experience, having been here in 2024, the BVI is more affordable right now. Now it could vary depending on seasons and other factors, uh, but that's been my experience. I found St. Thomas to be very expensive for accommodation and very limited. Also, I found uh, limited accommodation on St. John. Now don't get me wrong, Virgin Gorda was expensive, but if you find Airbnbs on there, you can save money. The population of the US Virgin Islands is around 105,000 people. The population of the BVI is 40,000 people. The USVI is about double the size in area than the BVI, so that might play a factor. Although the BVI has 60 different islands, whereas the USVI have around 50. Now on to the subject of safety. So when it comes to safety, BVI was safer than the USVI. Most of the locals that I talk to will also say the same thing. Now, St. Thomas is the one that they say is the most dangerous, also St. Croix. St. John doesn't really have a problem with crime. Now, when it came to BVI crime, I would say most of the islands were generally safe. Probably Tortola would be the most dangerous. But aside from crime, so we've just touched on crime, we know that USVI is a little bit more unsafe because of crime, but the disasters or the problems that can happen, hurricanes, both are prone to hurricanes during hurricane season. Obviously, that can be a big thing. Hurricane Irma, as we all know. A lot of the tourists that ever have any sort of incident at all are typically because of motor vehicles, a moped, side-by-sides, four-by-fours, or being swished out to sea by a rogue wave or rip curls. So yes, there is petty crime. It's not the biggest issue. It's just something that exists that doesn't exist as much in other islands, such as Virgin Gorda. I'm not saying that when you come to St. Thomas, be afraid, or when you go to St. Croix, be afraid. I'm just saying it's a bit more unsafe than the other places in the BVI. Joe's Van Dyke probably was the safest island along with St. Thomas that I've seen. Joe's Van Dyke along with St. John was probably the safest. So let's talk about the arrival process. What you need to know is that the BVI, British Virgin Islands, is a British overseas territory. USVI is a US overseas territory, and they're both here in the Caribbean. If you're coming from the United States, you do not need a passport. Uh, you can arrive with your ID, and if you're going to the BVI though, you will need your passport. If you're going to go in between islands, you will process immigration going and coming back from either one of those. So on the subject of currency, when you're in the BVI, it's the US dollar. And when you're in the USVI, it is the US dollar. So very convenient. It's not the Eastern Caribbean dollar or the Euro or anything like some of the other islands. Another thing that's really convenient is both speak English, that's the native language. So you don't have to go out of your way to speak a different language or get a different currency. So good news for those two subjects, right? Credit cards are widely accepted on both island chains in the territories, but some areas are cash economy. For example, going to Water Island on USVI, cash economy. A lot of St. John I noticed was cash economy. The ferry with the car uh, driving onto the barge, cash. Uh, Joost Van Dyke, also cash economy for the most part. Although some of the places do take cards, but very valuable information. Now let's talk about food. Now let's talk about the people. So I found the people in USVI and BVI to all be friendly, but overall I would have to say that BVI just had a little bit more of a friendly vibe to it. I feel like St. Thomas, because it's American, it's got that fast paced, corporatized, materialistic kind of vibe. Whereas in uh, the BVI, Joe's Van Dyke, Virgin Gorda, people are a lot more relaxed, chilled out. So take that into consideration, do with that what you will. But both places are very friendly. It's just I found BVI to be more friendly. So now for my final review of the BVI versus the USVI. So I would say both have very beautiful nature. You can't go wrong in either territory. Uh, my favorite islands in this order are going to be number one, Virgin Gorda, number two, uh, St. John, number three, St. Thomas, number four, Tortola, number five, St. Croix. Um, I would have to say that 
as far as the people go. I just found the people in BVI to be so much more down to earth and friendly. Uh, I think it's a different vibe than you get with American cities or American territories. Americans have a more upbeat kind of personality around the way they do things, whereas places that are separated from that, they're a bit more relaxed. It's not all about money, not all about materialism. So that can be refreshing. And I found that in BVI, whereas people in USVI, super friendly also, it's just you asking me BVI or USVI, I'm going to have to say BVI has a bit more down to earth, friendly people. You can find that though in USVI. Don't get me wrong. And if you enjoyed this one and want to learn more about USVI or BVI, watch these videos next right here, where we do island tours.